Good morning everyone. So we, um, we're, we're carrying on with a bit more algebra today. We're going to be looking at repeated factors. So what are they? Well, settle in for the ride and we will find out. Right then, so we've got this little statement here. Repeated factors. A single fraction with a repeated linear factor in the denominator can be split into two or more separate fractions. So what the flip is a repeated linear factor? Have a little look at this. So here's our, here's our fraction and our repeated linear factor is our squaring of that bracket. So that's x plus 1 times x plus 1, isn't it? And what that means we can do is we can say that we're going to have, we're going to have not two, but three parts here. We'll have x plus 1 as one factor, but say that number there was 3. 3 squared would be 9, wouldn't it? So you might have another one where the denominator was 9. So the square of x plus 1 is going to be our next denominator. And then the third one will be the other bracket, 2x plus 1. You might want to have a little go now and see if you can predict what's going to happen. So we need to multiply the top parts by all the other factors. Now A's already got one load of x plus 1 but it's going to need another one to make the x plus 1 squared and the 2x plus 1. The b only needs the 2x plus 1, so that's the simplest one out of them. And the c is going to need the x plus 1 squared. And all of that is going to give us something identical to 11x squared plus 14x plus 5. Now, when doing these, it's really nice to use a, a mixture of substitution and equating uh, the like terms. So what we're going to start with is if we say that uh, let x equal minus 1, that's going to take out the a's because that'll be zero. That'll take out the c's because that'll be zero. And just leave us with b2x plus 1 is going to be equal to 11 times negative 1 squared plus 14 times negative 1 plus 5. And then we're going to be expanding all of that and simplifying it. So that gives us 2bx plus b. Now it doesn't, why have I put, left that x in there? That shouldn't say 2x, should it? That should say uh, 2 times minus 1. So let's just put minus 2 in there instead. And then start that bit again and say, right, I've got minus 2b. Well, I can sort that out, can't I? What am I talking about? Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So that's going to give us minus 1b is equal to minus 1 squared is 1. So that's just 11 plus take 14 plus 5. So 11 take 14 is negative 3 plus 5 is 2. So that means that negative b is 2. Therefore, b equals negative 2 and that's our first part of the answer then we need to make this bracket 0 don't we so in order to do that we need to let x equal minus a half because then that will uh, or negative a half to make the other bracket 0 and that means that we won't get any A's again, we won't get any B's, we will just have C, 1 take a half is a half, so I will sort that bracket out straight away this time, squared is equal to 11 times a half squared plus 14 times a half plus so then if I sort that out, a half times a half is a quarter. So we're going to get c over 4 equals half times a half is still a quarter. So we'll get 11 over 4 
then we will get half of 14 is 7 plus 5. Now, if we times everything by 4, I think that makes that easiest. Times everything by 4 gets us C equals um, 11 plus 4 times 12 is 48. So it is 59. And that seems like a lot for one of these, doesn't it? I must have made a mistake somewhere. What have I done wrong? Ah, let x equal negative a half. Remember to get a, that's not going to make any difference for our squareds, but it has made a difference there. So that is going to be minus 7. So when I sort this out, instead of being plus 48, I'm going to get minus 28 and plus 20. And if I add all of those together, I get... 3. So C is equal to 3. Now that we've done all of that, if I have a quick look back at my original equation, I can say what B is, I can say what C is. Do I need to go through the hassle of expanding all of this? I don't really, because all I'm going to do is equate for um, the squares. So let me write that out again. Um, we won't need the B part because that's got no squares in it. So I'll, actually I'll write the whole thing out again and we can look at it and carry on. Okay, I've done that twice. First of all with the B and the C, then I've replaced that with a number. And now I'm thinking I'm going to equate the X squared. So I'm just thinking about the coefficient of X squared. Now over here, what coefficient of X squared am I going to get? I'm going to get... 2x squared times a. So that gives me 2a. Here I get no x squared at all. Here I'm going to get x squared plus 2x plus x, aren't I? So x squared times 3 will give me 3x squared. So it's the 3 I'm interested in. And over here I've got 11x squared. So then all I have to do is take 3 from both sides and I get 8 and then I divide both sides by 2 and I get a equals 4 and what that means is I can write my original thing out nicely at the end so that I've got my original fraction x plus 1 squared 2x plus 1 is now equal to a was 4 over x plus 1 B was negative 2, so I can write minus 2x plus 1 all squared. And then C was 3, and so that's 3 over 2x plus 1. And that's the only example I'm going to give you today, folks, but I am going to give you plenty of practice. Now, most of you have got the textbook by now, but not all of you, so I will put all the questions up just following when I stop speaking in a moment after this or you can go to the book so if you want it in the book it's book 2 it's page 13 exercise 1e and we're doing all the questions apart from 3 or 6 3 and 6 which is otherwise written as 1 2 4 5 7 and 8 Okay, good luck with that folks. Let me know how you get on. Goodbye.